Welcome to the Rochelle Show. Why, hello there! My name is Richard, and indeed, welcome to the Rich Arnold Show. And oh boy, do I love me a good racing game. Anything that's able to get me behind the wheel of a super-powered race car is alright in my book. I mean, let me go ahead and show you just some of the many racing games that I own. Hey, here's a list of these. That's a racing game. That's a racing game. That's a racing game I have. These two as well, you can drive vehicle cars, and that one, this one's a cartoony racing type game. It's, uh, it's some more, uh, I think, uh, yeah, uh, this one here, and there's so many more here, there's uh, that one, that's a race, it's racing in the title, up here, and so many of them! The term racing game fanatic doesn't even begin to describe me. I'm a sucker for the genre. I like watching Formula One, Le Mans, and touring cars on the television. And all of this is incredibly ironic because I still don't have a full driving license and that's a downer right there. But right now I want my next review to be of a racing game because I simply love the genre to bits. So now what I'm gonna do is go around my collection and pick one entirely at random. I'm not looking, I'm not looking, I'm not looking. I swear to you, I swear to you, I'm not looking. Uh, uh, hmm. Which one is this? What do I have here? Ridge Racer Type 4, eh? Yeah, why not? Let's go with it. So this game is part of Namco's popular arcade racing series called... Uh, Ridge Racer. And here's some fun trivia for you. The inspiration for this game franchise came from a series of Japanese films called Megalopolis Expressway Trial that featured illegal street racing on Japanese freeways. Well, I found it interesting anyway. And in keeping with the street racing theme, one of the key mechanics in this series is the use of drifting through tight corners to keep up speed. Unlike in other contemporary circuit racing where you slow down before taking tight corners. And this game, R4, was the fourth console based entry in the series arriving on the OG PlayStation in September 1999 for us Europeans. Of course, you Americans and Japanese got this game much earlier than we did, such as the way we release dates, you lucky Sonic bastard! It was also the first in the series to feature garage shading on the polygonal models. I'm not a modeler, don't ask me what this means. And it also came with a free remastered single track copy of the first Ridge Racer game, as well as playable demos of two other Namco titles, Tekken 3 and Klonoa daughter phantom isle oh you want proof do you all right then well here's my copy let's go take a look see oh okay well that's unfortunate and now i think that's the basics covered so are we ready to find out whether this game is treasure or trash are we i can't hear you oh goodness sake why am i trying <laughs> Let's just get on with it. Now, I don't really know the purpose of this opening FMV. It's got cars snarling, sliding and spurting flames from their exhausts, but it's also got this really weird dance music track. Weirdly enough, it reminds me of those odd dance tracks that they used in Sonic R. And of course, let me introduce you to the eye candy grid girl called Reiko Nagasi. I know nothing about this woman except that she's not real and that she's somewhat of a recurring character throughout the series because of popularity among the fans. Personally, she's not for me. and I can't can't fathom this opening video, but at least I can't fault its solid looking visuals, graphics and sound quality. Yeah, it looks nice. Ridge Racer Type 4 Hey, I don't need the title of this game read out to me. I have perfectly good eyes of my own. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so okay, so our main game types are the Grand Prix mode, Time Attack, Split Screen versus Multiplayer and a lot of other stuff. So, where do we start? Grand Prix mode, why not? Let's get into the meat of this sandwich straight away. So the Grand Prix mode follows this format. You play eight races split into three heats in a 2-2-4 arrangement. To advance through each race, you need to finish in or above the designated position. Third place for the first two races, second for the next two, and then you have to win each of the final four races to become the world champion. Jesus no pressure or anything. You get four attempts to advance in each race, and should you fail, then you have to learn to play this game ever again. Joking aside, you still get the game over, and you'll need to start all the way from the beginning. And now let's choose the team we want to race for. And as a fun easter egg, each team's name is a reference to another Namco game, and they all represent a different difficulty setting. First off is the French Micro Mouse Mappy Team, then there's the Japanese Pack Racing Club, the next one up is the Italian Racing Team Solvalu, and finally the American Dig Racing Team. Did you, you get all that? 
do you need do you need do you need, do you need uh, another visual representation? Okay. There, there we go. Now it makes sense. And then you pick which manufacturer you want to supply your team's vehicles. Depending on which manufacturer you choose, you'll essentially be picking the power slide control scheme you'll use to navigate corners. Either a drift setting or a grip setting. And then once you pick the transmission setting you want, you're virtually ready to race. Woohoo! Boy, I am stoked! I just can't wait to hear that oh so familiar sound of intertwined performance engines whirring on the starting grid before the lights go out. It'll be something like this. <laughs> so no more time wasting, let's see how this game plays. And here you are on the starting grid. You always start every Grand Prix race you enter in 8th and last place. Oh please sir, why can't I start in a higher grid slot? There's no time to complain, boy! So while the countdown... um counts down <laughs> you'll be able to use the accelerator button to rev your engine and try and get the best start if you use too many revs you'll stutter a bit before getting off the line and depending on if you chose the manual transmission setting you'll use the buttons to change gears and geez you use the left and right arrows and the analog stick to steer isn't that as bad <laughs> when you get to a corner that you won't be able to take its speed without barreling headfirst into the barriers You'll need to use the power slide to get around it and keep your speed up. If you chose a car with the drift setting, you let go of the accelerator and press the brake button while turning to initiate a wicked slide and then you punch the accelerator and steer into the slide to get your car back in control. If you chose a car with the grip setting, let go of the accelerator as you approach the bend and simply turn into it. The car will grip the road surface and allow you to make tighter low speed turns that you can quickly accelerate out of. And that's all you need to know to play, using all of those techniques to pass your opposition and attaining or surpassing the minimum finishing position when the checkered flag falls should see you safely through the championship. You'll know when you're in the qualifying position you need when your rank turns from white to gold. So it's simple racing gameplay here and the game actually benefits from this. The learning curve is immensely gentle almost to the point of not existing at all and it leads to some nice and non-frustrating gameplay. That being said, I'd have preferred a small amount of challenge and more clever AI programming to make the race a bit less of a procession. I mean I'm trying my best to challenge challenge myself by playing on the higher difficulties, but the AI don't actively try to overtake each other. They more or less stick to their race order and just idly follow a set racing line and force you to avoid crashing into them. See, it's not much of a spectacle really. And even though this kind of formula was the norm in older arcade racing, I feel like the developers could have added more to it and made it better by actually programming the AI racers to actually race rather than just meander around the track in a set pattern. <laughs> To help spice up the competition however, every so often you'll be given a completely new vehicle with an improved top speed. One after the first two races, another after the next two, and a third one just before the final race. Which is nice in itself, but here's the thing. The increase in your vehicle's top speed is calculated depending on the finishing positions you achieve in the races beforehand. In other words, the better you place in the race, the better the top speed of your new car. Although one thing I have found really odd with the Grand Prix mode is the fact that they try to give it some form of a storm. I mean the game has these dialogue cutscenes in between races where your team manager speaks with you and weirdly enough they seem to have these foreign concepts called personalities and backstories. And even more weirdly enough, they seem to be linked with each other. For example, the pack racing team manager was a former driver that was disgraced after being involved in an accident that killed his co-driver at the time, who happens to be the brother of the Solvalu team's manager. What? Trimony! Talk about a game suddenly becoming dark and complex. <laughs> But all of that aside, I blitz the rest of the races and end up as the champion. Because I'm the fucking best. Each Grand Prix playthrough can take you about an hour each time, maybe less if you really plow through it. And as a bonus, the four cars you used in that playthrough are added to your garage. Plus you'll unlock a special extra trial challenge when you win the Grand Prix mode with each team, which we'll get onto later on. Right now I want to have a mess about with the other things you can do in this game. By the way, this menu system is slightly weird. To move through menus, you use the circle button and to go back you use the X button. Unorthodox navigation is unorthodox. Aside from the standard time attack mode where you race against the clock to post your best times on the leaderboard and the split screen multiplayer mode, you can sit down to have a look at all the cars you've obtained so far in your garage and you can even paint custom decals on the cars you own. Yep, 
Yep, I totally drew that myself. In fact, while I'm here looking at the car models, I may as well talk about presentation and design. On a general note, this game looks very well presented. The car designs are pretty cool, even if they appear very angular and polygonal. And this fancy shading system is doing its job nicely. Out on track, it's all pretty good as well, with only very intermittent texture issues, and some nice environmental sequences, such as helicopters flying above the track and jumbo jets taking off right next to the track. As for the track layouts themselves, I have to say that unfortunately, they're not as good. There are only a grand total of 8 tracks, and most of them use the same segment and start lines making them not as varied as I had hoped. And the fact that the last four tracks are locked until you play them in Grand Prix mode is kind of unnecessary with so few tracks to begin with. In game, you also only have two camera views, one from the front of the car with a rear view mirror and another above the car but without the rear view mirror. That means the game forces you to change camera views to get the rear view mirror. I don't get it! Why is it like that? Happily however, I do like the sound design. The car engine noises are convincing enough for its time and I adore all the music they compose for this game. I always maintain that the Japanese make great game music tracks and this is certainly no exception. The soundtrack consists of a variety of funky jazz, acid and breakbeat genres. In game, they're easy listening and outside the game, it's a great standalone album in its own right. Which is why I have myself a copy of the soundtrack that I obtained through methods that I will not publicly disclose on the internet. <laughs> and now, let me share with you my childhood memories of Ridge Racer Type 4. Number 1. This corner was the bane of my life when I was little, since I didn't know how to power slide back then. Come on! Number two, this track along with this music is an eerie combination. Oh, shivers went down my spine. Number three. <laughs> Number four, the announcer is impossible to understand. Oh yeah, yeah, what? And now, I said I would come back to it, there's one more game mode that I'm yet to look at. And I think it should feed rather nicely into talking about the replayability of this game. This extra trial mode is a straight out race to the finish against an outrageously tough opponent in an overly powerful car. Haha! <laughs> Here's the challenge I've been looking for. There are four of these trials available, one for each team. And should you beat the other racer, the car then gets added to your garage. And when I say these bonus cars are powerful, I mean that. Just look at that top speed, but more importantly, look at that car! It's absolutely bonkers! Oh, I have to try this puppy out. Oh my god! <laughs> So now, replayability. This game has boasted all these years that it offers a grand total of 320 cars to unlock. And that covers all 20 manufacturer models, multiplied by 4 manufacturers, multiplied by 4 teams. Apart from the 4 uber awesome cars you get from the extra trial challenges, all of them are obtained through the Grand Prix mode. So that leaves 316 cars to get, and I've done the maths here. So. With the help of Game Facts, I've worked out how to get all 316 cars. You need to play through the Grand Prix mode a minimum of 112 times. What? Is this game being fucking serious right now? That's an ungodly amount of times you have to play the Grand Prix mode. I mean, you could erase some of the hassle if you and a group of friends were lucky enough to have the pocket station gadget where you could trade the cars you owned, but that's highly improbable. And what do you get when you finally have all 320 vehicles? An extra 321st car shaped like Pac-Man and a Pac-Man style music track. <laughs> But seriously, I guess it's all down to your perspective. The Batman car is a quirky bonus, but the amount of work you have to put in to get that bonus without using cheats may be the ultimate turnoff for some people, and I simply cannot see myself putting that much effort into this game just for that. And so, Ridge Racer Type 4. Speaking as a gamer, it's still one of my favourite PlayStation 1 racers, but honestly, I think some of the flaws have made it age a fair bit. However, speaking as a reviewer, I shall say that this game is still rather good. You certainly can't call R4 a bad racing game by any means. Its gracefully simple arcadey mechanics and gameplay make it very easy to pick up and play. And for its time, the graphics and presentation are all pretty decent, and that includes the few full motion videos it has. I personally also really like the music it uses, and so long as you keep it on a 
high difficulty as much as you can, the overall experience is not too shabby at all. I'd also say that a multiplayer mode is good fun as well. With it being a racing game, however, the surprisingly low number of tracks was a letdown. The time attack mode is rather boring, I'm not a huge fan of the camera views in game, and the apparent story in the Grand Prix mode confused me a bit. When it comes to this game's replayability, it's certainly there and there is a lot of it, but it will undoubtedly become repetitive and strenuous with very little to show for it. In my opinion, I don't think the years have done this game much good and my final review score might reflect that a little bit. Nonetheless, this is still a solid arcade racer at heart and I still love it. So to finish this off, I'm going to give this game a score of 3.5 checkered flags out of 5, but this still means that Ridge Racer is worthy of the treasure list. And of course, your thoughts on the game, as well as your feedback on this video, is welcomed in the comment section below. And now I think it's time we end this video here. All I can say now is, stay you and stay awesome. Hmm, do you know what? I've actually had a really long run of good games that I've reviewed so far. I kind of wish for a game that's not so good. So I can have a look at that and spice it show up a little bit, eh? Where am I going to find a bad game though? That really, uh, what was that? Hey, thanks for watching you lovely people. Be sure to give a like and a favourite if you liked the video, and if you really liked it and you want more, consider subscribing to The Richardo Show so you can be among the first to see new content when it's ready. Thanks again, and I shall see you guys later on.